put a master swordsman in front of a table full of blades. This is what a character might do with these weapons. This is Milko's oh, <laughs> Yes. Welcome back to a special episode of Punch for Punch. You guys at home and Netflix seem to like us, so we're back. And we're back to talk to you about Blood Origin, the new Witcher series coming out, because it has cool sword fights and axe fights and dagger fights. We want to figure out what's the magic sauce to make this stuff look good on screen. So we've invited our friend Luke LaFontaine, expert swordsman and choreographer, to join us. And we put a master swordsman in front of a table full of blades. There's some weapons here that are similar to the weapons in the show. Why don't we get right to it, pick them up, and start using some of these? Oh, well, well actually, right wait, you know, be before we get right to it, I know this is a special Punch for Punch episode, but you got to start it off with like the right tone. Hit him with it! <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? So we are going to be taking a look at some of the fight scenes here from Blood Origin. And Luke, you know everything there is to know about swords, right? Maybe, yeah, <laughs> probably. Especially when it comes to like filming it. So I'm gonna get your breakdown on all this. Absolutely, I can't wait to watch it. Luke, real quick, tell us a little bit about yourself. Ever since I was about seven years old, I was obsessed with swords. It took me to Japan, it took me to Europe. I was fortunate enough to study with a number of different masters. 16 years old, I did my first film which was the original Karate Kid. That was my first experience into the world of stunts. Decided I was gonna come out to California and become a stuntman. And here we are 39 years later. It's enabled me to be here with you guys today. And you know, I always cherish being able to talk about what I love with good friends. Yeah, yeah. heck yeah. Well, let's, let's jump into a scene. Fight us a clan, and we may just make it out. Right off the bat, I love what they're doing with this. It makes brilliant sense in terms of the people with the larger weapons and the shields are at the front of the line defending, and the elf that's got the doubled smaller daggers is behind doing cleanup. This is very, very realistic combat, mm -hmm. and I like it. They're actually literally tactically doing things that would make sense. They're throwing spears and daggers. The sword strikes are for vulnerable parts. There was a guy on top of that table, Michelle Yeoh cut his legs out. Boom, he hit that guy in the neck. Why? There's a gap in the neck, right where the ax would be able to go. They also start with sword and shield. They don't end with sword and shield. Exactly. There's an evolution to the characters and it just adds more drama. It makes us care about these characters the way more. The story of the fight goes somewhere. Right. And the audience gets to go there with you, which is awesome. You've gotten rusty. Have I? Fights like this are so much harder to do. Oh yeah. You're dealing with so many elements at the same time. How do I make this look believable between three people and everybody's getting the right amount of time so that somebody's not left out? I have to admit, I would have been intimidated and gone, uh, scratching my head going, okay, Michelle, I'm gonna need your help on this a lot. Right, out of the three of them, she is probably the most skilled, not only as an actress performer, but as the character that she's portraying. So therefore it shows that she's constantly in control and still moving everybody around her and keeping everybody safe while still proving her dominance over them. She's using their hot headedness against, against them. them. And what's great is that's being very clearly told. You gotta love when like, somebody does the typical master thing and is like, I'm gonna beat you with a sheath or a twig <laughs> <laughs> against your blades. <laughs> There's a bold choice to start with. <laughs> Boom, again, really smart. Look at the armor design, look at the placement of her blades. Right. She's cutting people where the armor isn't. She's moving. Yes. She's not staying stationary. She's getting out of the way of these characters. She's getting a lot of the actress herself actually mm -hmm. doing moves too. It's great using doubles when you can, but like you need an element of the actor being physical and getting in there. Right. Just to earn the character. Every time you see an actor or an actress put that work in, it's besides it being believable in the storyline, you wind up respecting and defending that actor because you know that actor put that extra work in. Oh, look at that guy. Oh, you did some flourishes. That's Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what did we do? Somebody's been paying attention. What did we do in To the Death? And what did we see? I'm gonna do a bunch of sword flourishes. I'm gonna wind up paying for it because he wasn't having it. 
we looked at all the choreography, the tactics, techniques here, but we didn't talk about the weapons themselves. Luckily, we have the master armorer, Nick Jeffries, to teach all of us exactly what was his process in making these amazing weapons that we see being swung around in this amazing show. Let's go talk to him and learn about why he made the decisions Oh again. yeah, I'm dying to see oh, that. Oh, that's gonna be sick. All right, so we are on the line with Nick Jeffries here. Nick, thanks for joining us. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. My name's Nick Jeffries, and I'm the Master Armorer for The Witcher and its spin-offs. What a cool job title. <laughs> right. Can you tell me a little bit about what you did on Blood Origin here? Did you make the weapons? Did you help conceptualize yes, them? every stage is mine. So I read the script, break down who needs a weapon, and then we come up with the finished item. We have the hero weapon that's real. So if it's stationary, laying on a table, they're holding it. If it's really close up, we use the real one. In all other situations, we use rubbers. What was the inspiration behind the weapon designs that you did for Blood Origin? What I did with Blood Origin was push back into more ancient swords from Bronze Age weapons. Mm. But we have used steel because they have that technology. This is actually the Soul Reaver, the holy weapon that the quest is for. This actually has a bronze core in it, but it has a steel outer. But the bronze is a direct connection with the bronze that's in the blade. Anybody you kill, you have a direct connection in the bronze to them. I love that. That's cool. Yeah, it's super cool. All that like that's world really building. Cool. Wow. Mm, that's a sick so, axe. Oh, it looks so sick. Yeah, that's for <laughs> Charles' big axe. Now that, as you can probably hear, is hollow. It doesn't look like it's hollow, but it's made out of three mil plate. If we made this solid, you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like 14 issue. pounds. Plus being steel, it lets me get some proper looking age to it. I would like to claim that it's stuff, it's not in a museum because nobody's found it yet. <laughs> but if you made it really rusty and put it in a hole in the ground, they'd go oh, fantastic. Like <laughs> <laughs> what I'll show you next, actually, is the only dedicated dwarven Ooh. weapon. Oh, <laughs> so oh, this oh, yes. is Meldorf's wow. hammer. It's called Gwen, which is Meldorf's murdered girlfriend. She talks to this. These things here, mm -hmm. that actually says Gwen on the side. So we've made it like they're both screw caps and it's hollow inside and it contains her ashes. Hmm. Oh, wow. So everything was perfect in my mind for her. Perfect person playing the perfect role and then we managed to give them the perfect weapon. <laughs> so I'm really happy with how that came out. All the different weapons you have in there from Blood Origin, if you were in that world and you had to go into battle, which weapon would you take with you? <laughs> I like the daggers that were Eilers because they have this ring on the end. Yeah. And once you have a ring, you can do so much more with it. And if you were gonna use something for real, would probably be this dagger of everything we made. Well, well, Nick, thank you, thank you so much for taking the time. Like every time you would step away and you bring out another blade, we'd always be like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. See, this is the thing about armor in the way we do it. Really, you've just had a little insight into our unusual world. I love it. Yeah. Well, amazing. thank you. Yeah, That's thank you. amazing. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. All right. Well, we learned about these weapons. Now, Luke, will you show us how to make them look good on camera? Absolutely well, let's go have some fun. Sweet. Yes. Luke, on this table in front of you, I have three weapons. Weapons that are close approximations to what are in the show because the actual weapons are off in England, so we got the closest thing we could. But I was hoping you could show us how to make these look cool on camera. Let's unveil the first pair. Under the red veil, we have daggers. Not a problem, boom, here we go. We've got a pair, not exactly matched, of Kukri's. If we're talking about practicality in terms of combat, both forward is the most practical way to use these weapons. But it's a fantasy show, so screw that. We're not doing that. <laughs> By cutting patterns, X's, horizontal cuts, upward cuts, if I make a combination where I cut down, I cut across, I cut up, I cut down, I can come up with any kind of pattern I want to come through here and cut somebody Ooh. and stab. Ooh. There's no limit on how they can be used in terms of a fantasy piece. I might be able to demo a little bit further if I have another weapon for these to go against. Luckily, under the yellow cloth, we have broadsword. Is this called a broadsword? 
Yeah, technically that is a Chinese Dao or Chinese broadsword. This is very, very typically a military weapon in ancient China. And for the show, it's very similar to Michelle Yeoh's character's sword. You notice, that's a steel sword. Yeah. It's a wushu practice sword, which means it's not sharp, but it's still steel and it's got a thin edge. So we're gonna be careful on how we use it. Here in the States, we're a little bit more on that cowboy edge. We will mix materials where in England they won't. But I believe it's part of the Declaration of Independence where it said, but we also want to be able to use metal weapons in our martial arts scenes, so. Yes, King right, right, and that's there. written yeah. in there somewhere, yeah. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a dance partner here for Luke today because Guy and I, we're just going to be watching and talking. So Stephen Dunford, if you'd join us. If you guys happen to watch the To the Death short film on the Corridor channel, uh, Steve is one of the guys with the energy swords. And that's why he's here today to put his hands on that sword because I trust Stephen Dunford not to split my head open. <laughs> okay, so this is what a character might do with these weapons. He cuts vertically at my head. Bang. Now, I'm doing what's called an X block. When I oppose with both weapons, I'm scissoring the blade in between both blades, so there's nowhere for the blade to slide off to. I want to take advantage of this and use one weapon to attack and one weapon to defend. So I use my right hand to slide the weapon off out of my trajectory and make a cut at him where he's gonna take a diagonal cut down at me and we both miss, he makes a horizontal cut. I can parry double, which puts a wall of steel in between me and the other blade. I can also do the exact same X block if I choose to and deliver a fatal blow. Okay, so he showed us some cool moves with daggers. So now we're looking at this blade here. You know, this is basically an equivalent of the sword that Michelle Yeoh is using in Blood Origin. How would you amp this up and make it stylistically look good on camera? If I was gonna draw this weapon, I wanna present the sword. Once I draw the sword, the sword wraps around my body. Chinese Daos are about keeping the sword moving, mainly because in a lot of instances in military combat, you're not fighting one-on-one. -on -one. You're in a battle with hundreds of people. If I keep the sword tight to myself, I can parry and keep myself wrapped in steel while I stab and cut other people. It's a light, agile weapon with a broad blade that's really sharp. So you showed me how to use this you know, weapon kind of in a personal way, but I'd love to see this used cinematically in a fight, even just like a five or six move demonstration. We gotta oppose this with something. Let's use something we haven't seen. Well, perfect, because under the blue cloth we have. Oh boy. Ooh. That one's mine, right? Yes, you, you, you can have that okay. one. Uh, oh wow, this actually has a lot of weight to it. Yeah, that's a steel axe. Well, here you go, sir. This character sword's already in the sheath, hasn't been drawn out yet. This character doesn't know that this person's gonna attack him, and the fight starts, and he decides to thrust the ax forward at me. I block with the sword still in the scabbard and shove the blade down. He decides to cut up, I evade backwards. He cuts diagonally. I decide that it's time to use the sword now. I pull the sword out, bind the sword, hit him in the back with the sheath, and prepare for a fight. So I can't help but notice that you guys have a certain body language, where it's like, it's almost like you just telegraph things a little bit with your shoulders, with your hands. My body movements match the movements of the sword, but also I'm telling a story stylistically. I could do all the same movements that I did without that. And it would look very boring. Everything would be very <laughs> square. I'd pull the sword out and kind of just stand back and be ready to fight. So the idea is if you've got a performer who's amazingly physically capable and is comfortable with a weapon, let them rock and roll a little bit. Then you can develop it, then you can mold it, then you can say, hey, I love that, more, 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 or less, less, less here and there. All right, so you made that sword look really cool. But what about this ax? Let's take this ax and let's make this our primary weapon. How do you make an ax look good on screen? Whenever you see a big giant ax like this in movies or television, you always see this big kind of brutish, I'm gonna take this huge swing and cleave you in half. Axes weren't actually used that way. This isn't a super fast weapon to recover. You can kill me now, 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 so, now, so, so, now, so. <laughs> maybe now I have a chance. Right. The idea is this is a bullying weapon. I stay what's called in my box. 
So as a martial artist, I stay in the confines of my body. I harass, I can move the weapon around, I can hook, I can stab, and these points are called the horns. So a lot of times you'll see axes where on this axe it's almost symmetrical. I use that to poke into your face and you don't like it very much. The other thing about an ax is look how wide the head is. So when I'm standing here defending myself, I've got all this steel in front of me to pick up other people's weapons and keep you from hacking me in half. Mm. So let's do a short demo between that sword and this ax to give you an idea. Good luck, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> We're rooting for you, buddy. <laughs> Steven does a vertical cut, boom. I dispel that. Steven does a diagonal cut. I get the hell out of the way. Now, same thing, he makes a flat horizontal cut at me. Bang! That's what this weapon is great for. I have the advantage, I can do all kinds of nasty things to Steven as a reply with this weapon. And you saw it in some of the footage we watched. He's not taking these giant swings. When he takes some of those guys out, he goes, Bang, he takes that guy's leg out and he just yanks him and he drops to the floor because economy of movement. If you're utilizing an ax in the way it's supposed to be used and now you're doing it on film, in order to make that feel interesting, is it a lot about showing the unique traits of that weapon in your opinion? Yes, this weapon served a purpose and it's got its own style in terms of how it's used. Again, in fantasy, we can do whatever we want, but the idea is you've got all these pointy bits, you're gonna use all of them and you're gonna to train to use all of them. So we've taken a look at daggers, we've taken a look at a broadsword, we've taken a look at a war ax, all inspired from Witcher Blood Origin, which is out now on Netflix. Make sure you go check it out. There's some really cool fight scenes in it. Steven, Luke, thank you so much for joining us and showing us how to use these weapons cinematically on screen. Thanks again, it's always a pleasure. I always have a good time with you guys. Heck yeah, same here. And you know, I'm curious, you know, to all of you watching, if you had to go into battle, which one of these three would you pick? Daggers, broadsword, or war ax? Let us know in the comments below and see you maybe in another Punch for Punch at some point. You like us? Yeah, maybe leave some comments about that too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so long everybody. Happy holidays. <laughs>